Hello and welcome back to Bricking It. Today we're going to be building Quirrell's defense against the Dark Arts classroom. I've got the base all tiled off and ready to go. I'm going to start off with this panel piece. It's got this nice sticker on it. And we're going to start off by building this back corner in front of the window. You can see here there's a rack with all sorts of tails and teeth and bits and bobs all over it. I did want to build a separate rack so I knew it would take up far too much space that I wanted to use for other things. So I'm using these clips attached to snot bricks and Technic pins on the wall. That's going to be covered in an array of different items just to replicate that kind of busy eclectic look at the back of the classroom while not taking up too much space. Use all kinds of little animal parts and bits of vegetation just to fill up this space at the back of the classroom. I think it gives quite a nice visual representation of what we see on the film. I didn't manage to find a skull that I like that would fit at the top of this. But I think that just fills up the space quite nicely. Here on the other side of the classroom, the obviously most distinguishing feature is the dragon skeleton. I just don't have any room to fit that in whatsoever. So what I'm going to be doing is replacing that with a selection of papers similar to these on the sticker. The first one I got from the latest potions classroom. As you can see these papers are hanging all around Professor Quirrell's classroom. So it keeps the theme going, even if it's not 100% screen accurate. Another snot brick up the top here, so we can add another stickered piece. And this one came from the Rivendell sticker sheet, which I was lucky enough to pick up on Brickling for quite a reasonable price. Now the problem with these is they are quite similar in colour to the background. But overall I think the effect works quite nicely. Windows came from the Microscale UCS Hogwarts set. Quite nice printed pieces. Used to live in my astronomy tower, but as that has all now changed, I wanted to find a new use for them. And as ever, I'm capping off the top of the wall with a half round one by ones that I need just to help guide my modules into place in the castle. So the next part we're going to start building is Professor Quirrell's teaching platform. This is quite a prominent piece. Got some carving on the front to replicate some of what we see on film. We're just going to populate this with various candles and other knickknacks. Couldn't entirely replicate what I was seeing on screen just because of the space I had available. So I'm just going to get a few candle pieces and some odds and ends. And of course, we need to add the most visible item up on his stage, which is this large cauldron, which is actually in situ in the filming location before they started and they had to build the classroom around it. That's our teaching platform. Now these two studs here are going to be where we build our pillars. Now if you've seen the uh, all classrooms build video, you'll see a slightly different version of this classroom using regular pillars. But I wanted them to be slightly slimmer so you can see what's going on behind. The problem with that is I have to use candlesticks in this one by one round with a hole in, which has a very poor connection. And this counter is going to keep track of how often that connection fails for the rest of the video. So I'm just using a couple of brackets with one of these nice fluted pieces on top. And, oh, there's our first fail just to bring it up to height and put these on. Oh, and there goes the other one. And again. So while this is a legal connection, it's not a particularly stable one. And although it gives us a nice slim pillar so we can see all the bits and bobs behind without obscuring too much detail, it is a bit of a pain in the neck when you're building. Now between these two brackets that I've added, I'm going to be replicating this string of dried animal parts, appears to be bat wings and various other spell ingredients, and again. And to use that I'm using a bit of flex tube. I tried it with an aerial, because we're using brackets and the precise lengths of aerials, it wouldn't quite fit in the space available, so I had to take a bit of flex tube 
and just cut it down. And from this, we're gonna hang a couple of bats. And there we go again. A couple of bats with bars with clips, just to hold them in place. Again, in the all classroom build, we'll see that these are actually light tan bats taken from the 12 Grimmel place set. But there was just too much light tan in this build and I really wanted to get a bit more color into it. So there we go, that's our bats. There are more strings running from the back wall to the pillars. And these tend to have various papers stored or maybe drying, resting across them. So I'm going to use these snot bricks that I placed into the wall to have a little bar. These have got a one by one round at each end, just to, and again, just to simulate some kind of fastening. Here we have another one of the stickers from the Rivendell set, just on a tile attached to a clip. I'm going to clip that onto here. And then we've also got from the Diagonelli sticker set, uh, one of the pieces that were originally for Scribulus, obviously. Pop and break one more time. Obviously you can't see this completely because as I say, the cylind the um, columns do get in our way, but we do get quite a nice look, bit of depth. Another Scribula sticker and one more from Rivendell. And he's gonna form our other string at the back of the build on the far side. I knew what was gonna happen. Just leave these dangling there. Again, it's a fairly precise size. So we can't stabilize the connection as much as I'd like. Hence our additional failures of connection. But there we go, you see all of those uh, hanging papers or carrier theme right across the back of the build there from one side to the other. Yes, another gentle connection has failed me. Let's put that back on top. So that is our main classroom area. That's all the details we're going to be including. Except, of course, for Professor Quirrell. And in this scene is carrying quite a large iguana. But we're going to be using quite a small chameleon to simulate that piece. Let's get him in place. Or not. There we go. And there's Professor Quirrell added to our build. That's the overall visual that we're getting for our classroom. The classroom's not going to be much use without some students. And again, the version one had them sitting here, which makes sense. But it also obscures a lot of the interesting bits and bobs we've got up on there. I'm considering putting them back here, but for now, all our students are out to the side. does give a little bit of a uh, unusual look to the class, having students just at the side of the build. But I don't want to block off too much stuff. I suffer from that with my Care of Magical Creatures class, where I'm blocking off the Nifla cabinet with the students. But there's our build. Students in place, Professor Quirrell, all our magical knickknacks in our temporary classroom. So here we are at the castle. Just going to install it into the build now. And one more failure. This lives just below the regular Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. And there's our build, fully installed and ready to go. So all that remains is to say thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave us a like. Drop a comment down below to let us know what you thought of the build. And to see more Hogwarts mock builds, Please subscribe to Brickin' It. Bye-bye.